Hey folks, Chris Rich, AZ Fly Shop. You bet. Folks, I have a lot of people come in. We talk about knots. We're in a fly shop. We, we, what's your favorite knot? How do you tie this knot? How do you tie that knot? Bear Trap loves the blood knot. Now I've never been a huge fan of the blood knot. I have tied it and I've, I've been scared of it most of my life. Most of the fly fishermen I talk to, most fishermen, are scared of the blood knot. It's a complicated knot. It's certainly one of the more advanced knots that we use. And it's not a real common knot that we use. However, I do like the blood knot for a few instances. Uh, if I'm tying heavier tippet or leader material together, I like the blood knot. It's got a slimmer profile to it. I can even, once I tie the knot, if I am tying it ahead of time or even out on the water, I could have some super glue put a dab of glue on the knot. And typically I'll tie that blood knot if there's a chance that that piece of leader material is gonna come through the eye of my fly rod. It slides through much easier. It's a lower profile than say, for example, the double surgeon or the triple surgeon or the Orvis tippet knot, which are knots that I'll typically use when I'm using lighter material. So if I'm using heavier material, I do like to use the blood knot. Now, I have been practicing this knot and I've developed a blood knot that is about 15 seconds. Sometimes it's a little quicker than that. Sometimes it's slightly slower than that. It's almost always quicker than 20 seconds. I've studied the knot. I've watched different people use it. Some people have a method where they use, include their mouth in it. Bear Trap likes that method. Uh, I don't particularly like it. You'll see my method in a minute here. Some people use a toothpick method. I've watched that for many years. I've learned it. The problem for me is when I'm out there fishing, I don't generally have a toothpick with me. And so I've got to tie this blood knot on the fly. I'm going to show you how to tie it. I'm going to tie it with some 20 pound monofilament. You can't see it very well on the video. I'm going to also tie it with two different colors of fly line so you can see me tie it. I'm going to show you what my view looks like and I'm going to break it down and show you how all these pieces come together to make it work. And the key is really being able to control all four ends of your line. And again, the knot scared me for a long time. It no longer scares me, but I spent some time with it. And uh, it's a fun knot to play with. It's a really beautiful knot as well. People like it, and hey, it's clean. The, the line pops out opposite of each other. Let's take a look at it. Put my click glasses on so I can see what it is that I'm doing. So I've got the monofilament. I generally like to have about six to eight inches of excess line hanging out. Uh, I'm going to just show you the knot and then we'll break it down uh, and slow, slow it down, show you step by step what I do to get to, to make this knot so simple. Here we go. Done. There's the blood knot, folks. Pretty quick, pretty simple, and I'm not afraid of the blood knot anymore. Now, let's take a look at that. I'm going to bring it up a little bit closer, and I'm going to do it with two different colors of fly line. I'm going to break it down, where I put the line, how I hold the line, what I'm doing. Let's look at it. All right, folks, I've got two different colors of fly line. I've got a green and an orange. I'm going to bring the camera in closer, show you how I set this up in my hands. So let's bring the camera in closer. So I've got about six to eight inches hanging out the end of each of my fingers. Now, I like to send one piece of it I hold in between my ring and small finger. I would say, for example, this piece of line is going back up to my fly rod, to the fly line. And this piece of line is going to be going to, for example, my fly or to the leader. Now, I, I like this piece to be held between these two fingers. I take this piece and I stick it between my middle finger and my ring finger. So you can see how I'm holding that in my hand. Now, I take my other hand and I'm going to reverse it. And I'm going to hold those two between the fingers like that. So I've got the small, short piece coming out between the small, my pinky, and the ring finger. 
I've got the longer piece between my ring finger and the middle finger, and it's opposite on the other hand. I've got this tag end coming out between the middle finger and the uh, ring finger and the middle finger, and the longer piece coming out between my pinky and ring finger. So there I've got that. Now I've closed my hands and I hold on to those, that line, and I've got my hand, my fingers are now free to work with the two pieces of line right here. And so I'm gonna count this and I'm gonna wrap this. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's four wraps on each side. Now you'll notice that I've got a loop right there, okay? And I'm gonna come up from the bottom through that loop and this tag end piece is right there ready to poke through. So I can poke it through and I can pinch it off and hold on to it. And once I get there, I can let go of that, okay? I've got a hold of the knot. I can reach around, grab this other tag end. I went through the bottom of the loop. Now I'm gonna go through the top of the loop, grab it with my fingers underneath, they're right there. I come back, grab the tag end with my finger, the long end piece, snug this down. There you go, folks, you can see it coming together. There's your blood knot, boom. That's how that's done. It's, it's the key is being able to control all four pieces of line with your hand and make that happen. It does take some practice. It's a knot worthy of spending the time with. Let's look at that from my view. I'm gonna do the same thing, looking at what I look at so you can see what that looks like. Okay, here we go. I've got six to eight inches of line out the end of my fingers. I've got the longer piece of line being held between my pinky and my ring finger. I'm gonna take the other tag end and put it through my ring finger and my middle finger. I'm gonna take my other hand and put it through right there. And I'm gonna hold it there. Now I'm gonna close my hand up and I've, these are the two pieces of line. I can work with them now. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you notice when I do that, I'll use these two fingers and I wanna keep that hole open. You can see the tag end is wanting to poke through. It's right there. I just slide that, let it poke through. I pinch it off with those fingers and I hold that loop open and I can let go of my other hand. I've got control of the knot. Now my other tag end is here. I can then bring that, bring it down through. My fingers are right there waiting to hold on to it till I bring my hand around. I grab all four pieces, begin to snug it down. I would moisten it at this point and I would tighten it up. And there is your beautiful blood knot, folks. Very easy way to tie the blood knot. I wanna also show you an automated version. Let's look at that. So you're gonna wrap one of the lines around the other five times. Most of the time you can get by with four or five times. You're gonna bring that tag in through and put it right through where those lines cross. You're gonna do the other line, you're gonna wrap around in the opposite direction, for, again, four or five times. You're gonna bring that through the opposite direction of that hole that you've got there. I like to moisten here, snug them down. This knot you can trim off very, very close. Folks, there's the blood knot. A 15 second blood knot, sub 15 second blood knot, if you practice it and you get good at it. Having confidence in the knot makes a big difference. It makes it a lot easier to tie. I don't have to fret it or worry about it. There are some specific uses where the blood knot makes a lot of sense. Again, I like it when I'm tying heavier material together, when I'm tying material along my fly line or leader that may pass through that eye. It's gonna pass through a lot easier. There are an occasion that I might tie it further down. Maybe if I've got two sizes or of, not, of line that I'm bringing together that are widely separate, you know, you'll just be the judge of that yourself. I just wanted to share with you this method that I've developed and put together. Hey folks, if you found something of value, hit the subscribe button, share the video with somebody else, stop in the shop. 
I'm glad to spend time with you, show you in person how I put that knot together. I'd love to see what your favorite knot is. Tell us where the fishing's good. We'll tell you where we're catching fish. And folks, if your friends aren't talking to you about AZ Fly Shop, they might not be your friends. Just saying. See you at the shop.